Hello guys, Vita Hero here, and welcome to another Destiny 2 Lear video. Why bring you new and practical layouts for myself every once a week. Today's layout we will be maximizing and combining the Titan Skull from Exotic with its Covid Juggernaut and Mini abilities to create a build that allows you to recover health, recover lost ammo, and constantly recover melee energy. I like to call this build the Monolith build, for the sheer destructive and almighty recovery the build offers. I designed this build around PvE enemies, as the perks and the CNG the build offers all works out incredibly well against enemies that group up and are much lower health than you are. It's possible to use this build in PvP, but it would require you to use the top striker tree instead and also require you to change up your playstyle to fit a more dominant CQC build. At the moment, this build will be using the Kodo Juggernaut instead, but like I said, you can always change it to whatever you like. So the following build loadout is designed for PvE events, while large amounts of enemies will appear, such as Nightfall, Strikes, Public Events and Story Missions. You can change it to fit your playstyle, but this is what I won with, as I feel it would play very well for everyone trying it out. Your weapons now are the following. Your primary is the Battle Devil's Hand Cannon, which you don't have to go with, as this is just a personal choice for me. I tend to use it to kind of strip the shields down on enemies, sometimes, if not I just use it to weaken the enemies so I can then get in close and melee them. Your secondary is the Royal Despotization 2, which is a high firing SMG with the, with the high caliber rounds. Although high caliber rounds have been nerfed, they are still effective with knocking the aim off of players up close, or if you're not going to use it in PvP, it's great for stunning for a few seconds the enemies when you use it on them. Your power slot will be the Retro Future Shotgun, simple for the fact that you're going to be up close and personal with a lot of enemies. So you might as well be equipped with something that can damage and strip shields easily, and at least allow you to be prepared for bigger and tougher enemies that you know most of your melees won't have much effect on. Your armor is the following. Your helmet will be the insurmountable skull font with the arc impact mod. Your gauntlets be the lost specific gauntlets with arc impact mods. Your chest will be the wildwood plate with arc powergon mod. Your leg will be the wildwood greaves with a energy counterbalance mod. And your titan mark will be the noble constant mark with a kinetic munition mod. Your whole armor set will provide you with a 165 in stat ability, so overall a balanced build, great for surviving all types of encounters. So like I said, this build can work great for clearing up the smaller red health adds, but at the same time can go ahead and kill yellow health adds with a few punches. My weapons are designed around stripping their shields and doing enough damage to where I can one punch most of the enemies and cover my health, ammo and melee charge with one go. So you will need to be upfront with this build for it to work, as 90% of the time, you will be million pretty much every enemy in Venicity. The 10% now will be for using both your primary and secondary to weaken some of the enemies, to then melee them. At the same time, my secondary weapon, the Royal Despotization 2, can finish enemies quite well, allowing you to get in, do a few punches to finish them off. It also has the Grave Robber perk, to which I'll get a portion of my ammo back, but with the Kodo Juggernaut Frontal Assault tree perk active, it will allow me to fully reload my weapon, so I never have to worry about reloading most of my weapons. No, so you may know. probably want to change your SMG to something else instead, since generally the whole of the Korea Juggernaut will allow you to automatically reload all your weapons in one go. So it might make that perk kind of redundant on the my current SMG. I only went with it because it feels good and it's great for stunning enemies just enough. But if you want to go with something else that's a bit more hard hitting or a bit more flexible, that's entirely up to you. But this build is pretty fluent and great at recovering you in tight situations, as your skill tree, Code of Juggernaut, is designed around getting into the thick of things and being awarded for your recklessness. For example, Reversal allows your melee kills to immediately trigger health regeneration, which, when combined with the Skull Fort that does the same thing, means instead of you gaining a portion of your health back, you'll gain back half your health within a few seconds. Now, follow this up with another melee to the enemy, you'll have full health back and another melee charge as well, so it kind of works within your favour. But it doesn't stop there. The knockout perk from the skill tree, that when breaking enemy shields will increase your melee range and damage, when active it will allow you to hit enemies slightly further ahead, and also provide you with a lunge attack. And also, one thing I've also noticed is that it also allows you to one shot red health enemies from full health, without even needing to fire weapons. So generally, you can literally go ahead where the enemy is, one punch them, and you'll know if it's a instant one shot because I believe it arc energy will bounce off the enemy and they would generally start to disintegrate in the arc energy. If that works, you get your mini charge back, and that basically means that you can go ahead and repeat the process. 
And as long as that perk, as I just mentioned, the knockout perk, is active, it will keep giving you a increase in your melee range and increases your damage. So you're always going to be one-shotting red health enemies. It's a pretty flexible build, I tr I'll tell you that now. As you can see, everything flows and synergizes perfectly. So you'll be healing, recovering, and one-shotting enemies over and over again. To the point of you getting too carried away, which if you're not aware, you'll get surrounded and will lead to your death. This is something that I've noticed happened to me multiple times, as I got so carried away with just punching enemies over and over again because of I'm just so amazed at it, that I've been killed one too many times. Same thing now can happen if you get constantly hit by enemies, and don't close the gap between you and the enemy, as it can lead to your death very quickly. So be aware and know when to dip when things get too heated, as you will die. Now the only reason for this build I never went with the top tree is the fact that if you use your melee ability against an enemy and you don't kill them with it, you won't regain it back after you melee or kill them. You have to wait for it to regen again. While with my setup that focuses on giving back energy melee straight away, if I mess up it's not much of a big problem because I can go ahead, find another red health enemy, melee them and I'll automatically get it back again. So you don't have to wait here and there for it to regen again, you can always get it back. Although the top tree has given me an idea, and I have seen other ideas from other people, where you can use it, and use it to recover your grenades much more quicker. Which in many ways can work out incredibly well for PvP and PvE. So I might do a video based around this in the future, just to see how effective it is. But honestly, I really do love this build. You can use it for an aggressive solo PvE build, and be able to withstand and take out a bunch of enemies, while recovering everything you lost. And I honestly recommend you guys to go ahead and play around with this. Go completely mad with it. You can literally go into any PvE event, any PvE content, any PvE zone, and just melee to the point of not actually have to worry about ever using your weapons. Your weapons are there just to support you to the point of where you can weaken some enemies. But really, you can go ahead and just pretty much melee every enemy within your vicinity. So, if you ever want to use a skull fort for a PvE purpose, and never generally found a way to do so, then I present to you this build, the hyper aggressive and recovery build fit for any punchy titan. So that is the end of my video, I do hope you enjoyed it, if you did then by me leave a like, a comment and subscribe for more. If you didn't then by me leave a dislike, I'll understand, I'll look back over the video and I'll see what I need to improve on in the near future. So once again guys thank you all for watching and I do hope to see you again soon.